Welcome everyone. Today we have the 2022 Acura MDX Advance. And for 2022, it's completely redesigned. It's got a new platform, a new interior, and everything is just better. The things that you liked about the last MDX are still present in this 2022 MDX, but there's even more features and everything is just better overall. We're gonna take a full detailed look at everything on the exterior, the interior, and we're gonna take it for a drive. I'm gonna tell you exactly what I think about it. Let's get started. Hey, thank you so much for watching. My name is Nolan. I do full detailed reviews like this every single week, independent, unbiased. So if you wanna see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe. And after you've seen the video, let me know what you think of it. If you like it, leave a thumbs up. It really helps me out, but let's go ahead and get into it. All right, let's start on these exterior details. So obviously Acura, redesigned this MDX and it looks great. I think it looks better. I like the overall design. I think it's more elegant, looks more premium as well. But let's go ahead and start right up front. So of course you've got Acura's large grille. We have the wraparound chrome right here, the big Acura emblem. And then you've got full LED headlights and the signature daytime running light standard on every single trim level and LED blinker. So this is all full LED. Those are the dual eye headlights and I think they look really nice. You're also going to get LED fog lights on the Advance and A-Spec package only. Acura's front end design looks a little bit more upright, more elegant in my opinion, and you've got parking sensors up front. You can see the little indicators and then that's the way the headlight looks without the blinker. Looks really slick. And at night, I have a night review showing off these headlights as well. If you want to check that out, they look good. They're nice and bright. They're just not adaptive, which is kind of surprising for this price point. This paint color on this MDX Advance is the Performance Red Pearl. It looks really pretty on this MDX and we have kind of some chrome because of this Advance package. The A-Spec will give you more black trim pieces, but what do y'all think of the design, the paint, just the way everything looks? And also a good pairing with this and the chrome on here, I think are these wheels. So these are 20 inch wheels. The base model will get 19, but the rest will get different 20 inch wheels, 255, 50 series tires. I think they look good. The multi-spoke design just looks good on this MDX. And the mirrors gonna be body color right here. We've got a blinker, the turn signal indicator in them, the chrome trim piece. They're gonna be heated. They even have a reverse tilting function standard. They're power folding on every model except the base and these are even automatic dimming. And dimensionally they made the MDX longer and wider so you can definitely tell a difference here especially if you pair it up next to the other one but it's got a really nice silhouette without looking too much like a minivan it's right at around 198 and a half inches long and for the first time ever the 2022 mdx gets the double wishbone front suspension and even an all-new multi-link rear suspension and this has the next generation super handling all-wheel drive now one surprising aspect to me is we have the roof rails up top which of course are pretty common, but those are only on the advanced package. I'm kind of surprised by that. For the utility aspect of an SUV, I'd expect those to be on more trim levels or more packages, but you've got the same signature taillights. You kind of got that swoop, that angle in them. And these are LED taillights, full LED everywhere, even the LED blinker right there. So I think they look nice. They also look really cool at night. They stand out. They have just a unique design. You've got the super handling all wheel drive badge and these really prominent exhaust tips. Now when you get to the cargo area, the MDX has a power lift gate, standard no matter which one you get, but only the advanced package, which we have right here, gives you the foot activated lift gate. So the hands-free foot activated lift gate. And there's one more cool thing that I'll show you in a little bit. Now to give you a closer look at the cargo space back here, first of all, with just this stroller, just this kind of average size stroller, I cannot fit it behind the third row. So the third row space is a little bit lacking. I'll take this stuff out so you can see it better in a little bit. But you get almost 40 cubic feet with the third row folded down, which is okay. Definitely not that great. But over here, it's nice to see you get a 12 volt power outlet. And you also get a little hook right there, which could be good for cargo or a net. Personally, this actually works really good for like a grocery bag hook. And even down on the side, you get a little extra bin if you wanna store some stuff down there or even put some groceries down there. Now with the third row folded up, the floor space really isn't too bad, but the thing that really impedes on it 
is just how much that curvature is right there. So anything with height doesn't work that well, but you can fit like a carry-on suitcase or things like that back here pretty much just fine. And check it out, you've got a hidden storage area down here, which is always good. And in the hidden storage area, it says spare tire down here, but it's actually under the vehicle and it's only on all wheel drive models. That's one little disappointing factor, the fact that front wheel drive models don't get a spare tire, only all wheel drive models do. The front wheel drive models will give you a tire inflator kit. But one more neat thing is this can actually go down, I can get it, and you can put some stuff there. So you've got a really deep area if you want behind the third row. Now one thing that really surprised me is that these are not power folding seats. Not a big deal because you got this little handle you can pull. Then when you pull the handle, the headrest falls down and you can just pull that down. But you do have to reach forward and pull them up. In the top advance, I'd expect power folding seats, but that's just what you get. The bonus is that you can see just how flat this load floor is. So that could be very helpful if you can fold it down. And again, in order to fold the second row down, you have to come to the second row. There's no power folding option, but you can just pull this handle, comes down nice and flat. And then as you can see, you get a really nice flat load floor. So you could totally like sleep back here, camp back here, pack a lot of stuff back here, but there's just no power folding option. Now check this out. When you're all done, there's a button in here you can push and then you can just walk away without having to swipe your foot or anything and it will automatically close, boom. Now let's take a look in the back seat. So there is some good and some bad back here. Mostly good though. And I even got my car seat and I'll talk about how well that works in here. But these are the same leather seats. They have the perforations on them. They are comfortable seats. They're not quite as bolstered as you'll find up front, which is normal. On the door, Acura even kept the same nice materials. Even this open pour wood back here, the same nice big armrest and storage and bottle holder. And once you're back here, passengers get to enjoy this nice, large panoramic roof that's standard on every single trim level. And sitting behind myself at five foot nine, where I normally have my seat, I have plenty of knee space. I've got good foot space. It's not excellent, but it is still quite good and definitely spacious enough. One nice thing is that both seats have hard backs, but you still get the seat back pocket on both sides. Now, one thing that I really like is the fact that this is actually a bench seat in the middle. So this is a folding section. You can fold it down and have this pretty good size armrest, some decent size cup holders and some storage. So this is a nice space. And with the anchors in my car seat, it's pretty easy to get in. And that seat, I have to move forward just a little bit. If I have it behind me, it honestly still feels kind of tight. So car seat space isn't the best, but it'll work for most people. And then right in front of us, check it out. We get tri-zone climate controls. We have our very own climate controls back here. You can completely change your temperature, have it on automatic, even change if it goes to your feet, your face, just like you can up front. And we've got three tier heated seats only on the advanced package though. The heated seats might be on lower packages in say Canada, but in the US it's just the advance, which is kind of surprising that you have to go to the very top price point in order to get heated seats back here. And there are not even ventilated seats. These are perforated seats, but they have no ventilation, which I'm starting to expect more often, especially since the Kia Telluride and Hyundai Palisade both have those and those aren't even luxury premium vehicles. But I'm still glad to see you've got air conditioning vents right here. Plus, down here we've got some more power. Check it out. We've got a 12 volt power outlet, two USB ports, and then on the advanced package, you get this two prong power outlet right there. And foot space in the middle is also excellent, so fitting three people across should not be a problem. And I can sit up tall, no problems whatsoever. These seats also recline, so you can sit upright, you can lean back a little bit, and they also slide forward and backwards. So comfort back here is very good. And one more thing, this is always a nice feature, but check that out. You get these sunshades that are built in on both sides on every model except the base. Now getting into the third row is really a breeze. It's just one touch access, no matter which trim level you get. Push that button and then that seat will automatically pop forward and give you space to get into the third row. And the third row is just a two passenger setup, which is probably a good thing because that's about how big it is. Now, like I've said, I'm five foot nine and I have this seat scooted all the way forward. That one scooted all the way back. I cannot sit behind that one at all. 
This one, I can with knee space, and it's pretty crowded overall, but the only thing is I cannot sit upright. So people that are maybe five foot, mid five foot range could fit back here, and anybody younger, so good for kids, but not for adults. There is a cup holder back here on both sides, which is always good to see. And the advance package gives you a USB port on both sides. I'm surprised that all models don't, it's just the advance package. And considering it's the top end luxurious trim, the advanced package, there's no direct air conditioning vents here. You have to rely on the second row. There's nothing overhead or nothing coming out of the side. So that's kind of disappointing, especially if you have pets back here, there's no direct air conditioning vents for them. But one bonus is that it's just as easy to get out, push that button and boom, easy peasy. Now looking at the key fob, Acura gives you the smart key system. This does have some metal on it. It actually feels nice and it's still skinny so it fits in your pocket. Now you'll see we have engine hold. This advanced package gives us the remote start with the key fob and the climate control will automatically be activated too when you do that. And with Acura's smart key, there's a couple little lines on here you can press to lock it or there's a sensor in the back to unlock. And once you lock it or unlock it, you saw the mirror's powerful, but watch this. So I'm gonna unlock it, I'm gonna shut the door. It knows I have the key fob on me. If I just walk away, and once you get a certain distance away from the vehicle, it will automatically lock. Check that out. All right, let's take a look at these front seats. So on the base, you'll start at 12-way leatherette, and then you work your way all the way up to these leather seats in the advanced package. So first of all, these are full leather, they're heated standard on every trim and we've got ventilation here. This headrest can even move forward and backwards, which is nice. You've got the perforations in here. This leather looks nice. It feels nice. You've got good bolstering in here as well. And check out the adjustment on the 16 way adjustment. So you've got your tilt and up and down function, your reclining, and then this can actually adjust four way lumbar support. You can adjust the thigh extension cushion right here and you can even adjust the bolsters and how tight they squeeze you. Now that we're in here, first of all, every MDX will give you the entry exit system. So you've got the power adjustable wheel, the power adjustable seats that will go back to your memory settings. And we've got three position memory settings. And overall, I would say I've been very comfortable in these seats. One thing I really appreciate is that the headrests can actually move forward and backwards because most of the time they're so far forward, they're just annoying. But I like the bolster adjustments, the thigh adjustments, all of that. You don't quite get all of that on the lower trims, but on this one, you get the 16 way adjustment. And I've been very comfortable in here. The one thing I would like to see though is maybe a massaging function, at least on this top advanced model, but you don't get it in here. Now let's go ahead and start it up. So you've got push button start right behind the steering wheel, foot on the brake. And Acura gives you a nice little startup with this big digital display. So the main thing with the interior that Acura wanted was to maintain its versatility, in fact, increase its versatility, but also make it feel more luxurious. And I think they did exactly that. This is a nice interior. It's a functional interior. You actually have real open pour wood on the door and running across the dash right here. You've got the stitching on top, just kind of nice materials all around, even the stitching that comes down here. So Acura definitely gives you a nice premium looking and feeling interior, uh, especially compared to the last generation. And this is that same open pour wood on the side. The trim, like the open pour wood will vary a little bit. It's only on the advance. Otherwise you'll get some other trims on the other packages. But first over on the door, you've got your memory settings right here. This nice grab handle. There's even a strip of ambient lighting running up there. I'll talk about that later. It's open pour trim, the wood trim, semi soft material up on the top not that soft but then you've got this nice material here same with the armrest this is actually kind of hard but it's better size than most and a good grab handle plus you've got one touch windows on all four windows then just down there you can open up your trunk and it's big enough for my bottle holder and other storage and the steering wheel is also very comfortable i like it because it almost feels a little bit smaller so it feels like it's a little bit tighter in a way it's leather wrapped standard on every trim you've also got these nice bulky sport grips it's leather wrapped all the way around the a spec will give you an a spec specific flat bottom steering wheel otherwise you have almost like these little tires on each side of the wheel and the steering wheel is also heated 
on the advanced model that we have right here. All the necessary controls, voice, uh, radar cruise control, lane keeping system, all of the necessary stuff on there. Plus you've kind of got these like incognito uh, paddle shifters because they're black and they're actually like a rubberized material. They look nice and they feel nice. And on that windshield wiper, you've got rain sensing windshield wipers standard. And on the wiper stock, you've got rain sensing windshield wipers on everything but the base. So I have it on automatic mode and it's raining right now. And depending on how much the threshold is of how wet the steering wheel is, or the uh, windshield is, the wipers will work automatically. To the left of the steering wheel, you've got controls for your head up display, which is only on the advanced trim, your Acura watch features, and even the parking sonar. The head-up display is a 10 and a half inch head-up display, it gives you quite a bit of information and it's adjustable only on the advanced package. And now right in front of us, Acura gives us this fully digital instrument cluster. This is a 12.3 inch display that you get standard on every single model. It's the same size as the main display and the information is really small, like for example the trip computer over there. I mean, if you're looking at the whole thing and if you're sitting way back, if you have any vision problems or need reading glasses, you're probably going to have some difficulty seeing some of this information. And it stays in that little gauge over there. There's a lot of information. I like it and I like the way the digital aspect of it looks, but that's just kind of the way it goes. You can customize this layout a little bit. So for example, let's go right here and then it changes it a little bit like that. Otherwise, if we go back to this, and if we change our drive mode, for example, go over to sport, we've got the red gauges, and if we go back to normal, we've got comfort, pretty much kind of dulls everything down, snow mode, and then even your individual mode will look like this. You can access other things on here too, and then moving across over here, this is still not a touch screen. This is a 12.3 inch screen, which is standard on every single MDX and it's a dual content screen. So you have this box of content, then you have that box of content on the right side. And like I said, not a touch screen. It does sit fairly far back, so it wouldn't be very practical as a touch screen. But this is just like other modern uh, Acuras like the new TLX, the RDX, same kind of thing to where you use a touch pad in order to touch certain parts of the screen. So for example, if Apple CarPlay is in the top right part of the screen, all you have to do is touch up there. You don't have to mouse over, which is kind of interesting. It takes getting used to, and it's not necessarily my favorite. At least you get a volume knob and a seeking button. Speaking of Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, we have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The only thing about that though, is that does not operate the same way that regular uh, the regular screen does. You actually have to kind of use it like a mouse pad scrolling around. You can't just touch one part of the screen. So it's weird that it's different than the way it is on the regular screen. Despite that, the screen gives you a lot of different information and a lot of different ways you can customize it. Cabin talk, click on that and it will automatically pick up your talking and amplify it for the rear speaker. So if you've got people in the back seats, it's easier to talk to them so you don't have to turn around and yell at them. This car also has Wi-Fi, Sirius XM, HD radio, and like I said, a whole bunch of different things that you can customize and make your own personal stuff. And then on the right, you can customize what you see over here with the slider next to the touchpad. You, you know, it's nothing magnificent and you can't make the whole screen, for example, Apple CarPlay, but you can still see two pieces of information. Now for audio systems, the base model is gonna give you a nine speaker. Otherwise, the tech package will give you a 12 speaker. And then the A-Spec and the Advance that we have here give you the ELS 3D audio 16 speaker system. I've got a clip, put your headphones in. It's recorded with binaural audio. Let's go ahead and take a listen because I think it sounds pretty darn good. let's move down here we actually get tri-zone so three zone climate control standard on every trim so you can control what the rear passengers have and they can control it on their own as well all these buttons right here it's all kind of covered in piano black but everything works really well it's easy to access I like how you have physical buttons and knobs even same thing for your ventilated seats heated seats or an automatic function too which does work pretty well 
Just below the climate controls, you've got your drive mode button, which is kind of cool. You can press it to have a custom individual mode, and I went through those with you, so you can customize different aspects of it. For example, on the individual mode, you can see you can have the engine on normal, you can do uh, comfort or sport, so you can kind of change how the powertrain operates, even the gauges, whether the stop-start system is on or off, so that's really cool, and even the ambient lighting. And the shifter is unique. It is the push button shifter with the 10 speed. So all of them get this just like other Honda and Acura products, push button for park, pull back for reverse, neutral. And then this is regular drive or the sequential mode. But let's go ahead and pull back into reverse. And all of them are gonna give you a backup camera with a wide or a regular view, but the advance gives you this surround view camera. So you can kind of see right there, you can toggle between a straight back view, uh, you can turn off your cross traffic alert. Otherwise, if we're in park, you can push a button to activate it to see just like that. You can see the tires, which can be very helpful with parking. You can even toggle again and turn it off too. So the button that you push is right off of this right stock, the wiper stock right there, a little camera button. So easy to access pretty much any time that you need to when you're parking. And then brake, uh, brake hold button right here and the auto stop start system to shut off there. And then this is kind of cool, this is concealed. This is actually a couple of charging ports. You've got both types of USB charging ports right there, or you can tuck it up out of the way and it's nice that you can tuck it out of the way because you've got wireless charging standard right here. This is a great size mat. It fits underneath of this little shelf and this is the shelf that you can use that works really well to rest your hand on here and operate this touchpad. So I like the ergonomics of that. I even like how you can kind of grab it. It's not like just a solid knob. You can actually wrap your hand around it if you want to. And storage is good. You've got a little storage cubby that is wide enough to fit a phone in there and really good size cup holders and bottle holders for smaller drinks or larger drinks. Those work really well. And then this armrest is really wide for this class of a vehicle. I love this. I love how wide it is. I just wish it was a little bit taller. That's my only thing. It seems a little low and you can't adjust it, but it's got a top tier compartment, good for a pen and maybe a couple other small items. And then you can lift it up and have a larger compartment. It is still kind of on the small side, all things considered, but there's a light, 12 volt power outlet, and a USB charging port. You can see the little rim of ambient lighting over there, and it's blue now because of the mode that we're in. And we have a locking glove box that is soft opening and has a nice liner inside of it. And up overhead, an automatic dimming rear view mirror with garage controls are also standard. Plus, we've got sunglass holders, We've got LED interior lighting in here as well. And check it out. Standard on every trim, we get this panoramic roof. It goes way back. This is on every single MDX, even the base. So that's pretty sweet. And for visibility, we go ahead and turn around and look out the back. Typical for an SUV, you could have that seat folded. There is the window back there, but otherwise nothing too spectacular. And as you saw, you do get ambient lighting. The base model gets just one color, but in ours and the rest of them, you get the iconic drive, which is 27 color themes and even more lighting for this advanced package. Be sure to check out my night review showing all of that off. So when we go to look under the hood, Acura is gonna give you two options and possibly another one, maybe later on. All of the regular MDXs are gonna give you this powertrain. It's the direct injected 3.5 liter naturally aspirated V6 290 horsepower and 267 pound-feet of torque paired with a 10-speed transmission. This 10-speed is smoother and faster responding than the previous 9-speed, so the 10-speed is new for 2022 on the MDX. It's built in-house as well, and we'll talk about it in the test drive, but this also has the next-generation super-handling all-wheel drive available. Front-wheel drive standard on the lower trims, and then super-handling all-wheel drive here. The super handling all wheel drive can now put up to 70% of the torque to the rear axle and 100% of that torque to one wheel. And miles per gallon with this all wheel drive model is gonna be 19 city, 25 highway, and 21 combined. And towing, if you're interested, front wheel drive, 3,500 pounds, all wheel drive, 5,000 pounds, but the second option is the Type S, which is gonna give you 355 horsepower and almost that much pound-feet of torque with the turbocharged V6. 
And unlike last generation, as of right now, there's no hybrid. I would expect a hybrid, maybe a plug-in hybrid, maybe an all-electric MDX coming down the road or something similar to this coming soon. Just a guess. Now we're behind the wheel of the MDX. And in a little bit, I'll put the camera on my head, give you that point of view. But my initial impressions of the MDX, I got to drive a 2020 model, and this still feels very similar. It's not like it's a big jump in improvement in terms of ride comfort or handling or anything. It feels a little bit smoother, maybe a little bit more elegant. And I still get the same nice feeling of this V6. So you've got a refined powertrain, but there is a difference with this 10 speed that we'll talk about in a little bit. It's been very nice. It's a comfortable cruiser. It's not quite as soft on the ride comfort as I would like, but those are some of my first impressions. Let's go ahead and throw the camera on and get into it. All right, now we are behind the wheel. So you can kind of get a point of view impression of what it's like to actually drive this MDX. And in this test drive, I'm gonna talk about the ride comfort, the handling, the acceleration, what it's like to drive on a daily basis and just give you my overall thoughts. And I think there's just a couple things that hold this back from truly feeling premium or luxurious, but I'll get to those in a little bit. Um, like I kind of gave you my first impression, it feels similar to the last generation, but still even a little bit better, but not a huge jump in any one particular thing. The powertrain is more responsive though. That is probably my most favorite thing about this MDX. And we'll get on it in a little bit. just a smooth 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 powertrain right now just in normal mode going about 20 pedal down a little bit of a delay there which you might expect now right off the bat this does have a whole suite of the Acura watch stuff including the lane keeping system including uh, adaptive cruise control we've got blind spot indicators on each side and this does a really good job of keeping you centered in your lane as well i'm gonna go ahead and shut that off though i'm gonna actually put it in sport mode so sport mode these are actually reactive passive dampers and not active dampers so the handling or the sport mode adjustment and handling is more of the steering feel and the input here that's not to say this doesn't feel good when you're driving it, because it does. It enhances the throttle response as well. So going around here, this feels, this actually feels quite good. You can feel the weight of the vehicle, but the way the steering feels is nice. And it was quick to downshift. No problems with that at all. Still holding the RPMs too. You can press the S to go into sequential mode, but the actual true sport mode, you gotta turn the dial. And the brakes, the brakes on here feel good. Uh, we actually have pretty large rotors and I've really got no complaints with them. It almost feels a little bit over boosted, a little touchy, but it doesn't take long to get used to at all. Still in sport mode. Partial pedal feels good nice and nice and smooth on this transmission now I'm just gonna press the sequential mode I'm gonna do some paddle shifters whoa Those rpms kicked up real quick these paddles are actually kind of fun you can have some fun with those they're not great but Downshift, downshift. And there's actually some nice sound. So speaking of sound, I'm gonna go back to, I'm actually gonna go to comfort mode. It really relaxes the steering feel. That's the biggest thing and it relaxes the throttle response. Um, so that's the biggest difference going into comfort mode. But in terms of sound, this has active noise cancellation to where it helps to block out some unwanted kind of droning sounds, uh, different frequencies. But when you put it in sport mode, that goes away. 
to where you actually get more sound in this cabin. Um, but a couple of the things that hold this back a little bit, in my opinion, is the fact that the ride comfort is not great. I think it's still good. I've seen people say that it's bad, um, but I would not say it's bad. It is still comfortable. You feel a lot of little things in the road and you feel big bumps more than I probably would expect. But on a normal sense, just a regular kind of, a normal person that's gonna get in here is probably gonna be happy with this. You can critique this all you want. It doesn't have the adaptive or the active damping suspension, just the passive, which is a little disappointing, but it's still comfortable enough and I would not let that hold me back from getting this vehicle, the ride comfort. And the next one, you'll find out in just a second. And the other thing I would complain about is the noise in terms of road noise. I took decibel ratings on a rougher textured surface like this one and at high speeds on the interstate and both of those decibel ratings were higher than I expected. You might hear some road noise right now. It's not great. It's not terrible either, but it's not premium in terms of the actual numbers. I think it sounds better than what the numbers said. We have acoustic glass standard on every trim here and acoustic glass standard on every trim on the side windows. Wind noise doesn't seem to be a problem. It's just the road noise. So just one thing to complain about, but I would say on the total, driving this on a daily basis, I like where everything is. I'm comfortable in here. I wish this armrest was a little bit taller and I wish we had a little different setup with the touchpad. But otherwise, visibility is good. Ride comfort is okay. Everything is good enough. And it's just still more fun and engaging to drive than some. And you gotta love that V6. So let's go ahead and wrap things up. So to wrap things up on this 2022 Acura MDX, I've been waiting for Acura to really come out, hit a home run, give you a lot of luxurious features that you might find in some German competitors or even some American competitors, but they just didn't quite give you all those features. For example, like power folding seats in the cargo area, those should be on this top advanced trim. Even maybe massaging seats or ventilated seats in the second row, just things like that. If you don't care about those, the interior is much better. Everything is comfortable. This drives nice. It's still fun and engaging to drive for what it is. And I love that they still kept this 3.5 liter V6 and they have the Type S coming out for those of you that want something really fun. So I've got to say, I was probably expecting more in terms of some of the features, but overall, I really like the elegance that Acura is bringing the premium aspect of it with the way that the interior feels and looks, it's just put together really well. And I like just about everything about it. Let me know what you think down below. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, tap the thumbs down button twice. Subscribe if you wanna see more reviews like this and have a great day.